Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the STEM Tech Co Show. I am Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current K-5 STEM teacher. I'm so excited about this topic today. This is part two of our video series, and it's all about the Hour of Code and how you can do this virtually. If you were remote teaching, or if this is an after-school club you want to try, you can definitely still do the Hour of Code, and you can definitely do the Hour of Code all year long. You don't have to do it during the official week. If you missed the last episode, make sure you check the last video. It's part two, where we talk about what Hour of Code is and different activities you can use in your classroom. So um, you can definitely, with Hour of Code, use any of those website links and send those to your kids and have them try that virtually. Now, the activities that I'm going to be sharing with you work well if you are doing synchronous learning. And so these could be whole group activities that you can do with your kids that are interactive and that they are using their bodies. So again, you can share those links with the kids. Nothing wrong with that. But these are some ways that kids can be moving. So we're going to talk about today what coding unplugged is. And if you're unsure what coding unplugged or unplugged coding, it can go either way. This is just coding done without using a device. So you don't necessarily need a computer, a tablet, to do any of the coding, it's hands-on manipulatives to represent that computational thinking. So how you can see the bigger picture and break down those steps using some sort of code. So some of the coding that you might see with younger students is with arrows. So arrows are really common, that directional coding with kids. And then it goes up into more of a block coding system with different types of coding languages depending on the platform. So um, I think of it like, you have the Bebop robots with those little arrows on top, and then you can move on to the um, like Scratch Junior, where there's some block coding, simple words, and then it moves on to Scratch, or um, if you're using Sphero, it's that block coding where kids drag. So coding unplugged is using those same concepts. You can use those similar coding languages, but you are doing, again, without a computer. So you're thinking, well, if I'm doing this remote, they're on a computer, how can you do this? Well, there's a few materials that you could prep beforehand and kids might actually have them at home and you're showing things on their screen like that you would in the classroom so you guys can do them together. So I'm gonna be sharing with you three activities that you can try. Now, if you're not teaching remote, so lucky, you can do these as station as, as well. So these activities that I'm gonna be sharing with you, um, two out of the three have actually done in person as stations. So you can do these either way. So the first station is really fun, and um, if you really get into it and really act it out, the kids will love it. And this is what I like to call human robot coding. There's hardly any prep for it, and I do have this in my shop as well, and I will link everything below with the show notes and tell you how to get those at the end. So I have prepared this all for you. So what it is are these little cards that have different directions on them, and this, <laughs> there's two people involved or two groups involved. You have have the computer programmer and then you have the robot and then these are the coding directions that the robot needs to read so when I do this as a class or if you're doing this on the computer I would have these cards prepared beforehand so I print them out I like putting them on bright paper so they really pop and so I have these cards and I will show the kids one card at a time what each direction means and how to represent it on my body so for example if the card says turn left I tell them this says turn left. This is what it means to turn left. So we will go through each of the cards so they understand the coding vocabulary, which is important with coding. You need to know the language for that platform. And then I will hold up one card at a time and have my little robots in class um, do the action on the card. I then will eventually add on more code so I can um, do more in a row to see how they do. I could draw this on a whiteboard behind me. Um, and I could even put laminate these and put Velcro and put them on a felt board so you could see them in order. So they get really into it. They start laughing and then um, you can make a game out of it. Whoever, like as Simon says, whoever gets the most correct in a row, they um, win a little sticker prize or something. So um, super fun. And then uh, for some of the kids who do really well with this, if you're doing this remotely, you could do breakout rooms and have the kids draw on a whiteboard um, their directions so they can take turns being the computer programmer and the robot. When I'm done with this station, um, I will laminate these cards. If I laminate them, they're like really shiny on the screen and you can't see them. But 
I love these little photo boxes from Michaels. They're on sale all the time, so look for deals and get a coupon. You know I love coupons at this point. But I love um, having the little direction card on top, and then I put all the cards inside. So if I'm doing this at stations, I might have like a multiples of these laid out. And then I didn't do it for this one, but I might print the cards to match the box so the kids know where the cards go. So just a little tip for organization there. Another one, this is a um, newer um, unplugged activity, is um, I actually got an email about this. It's Google CS First, and they have their own unplugged um, activities on there. I haven't done these specifically with my class. However, I love Google CS First digital curriculum. Um, I normally use that for after school clubs. So if you're thinking about any after school clubs that you might wanna do, actually you could do their CS First curriculum the virtual one with virtual clubs if you wanted to. Um, but it goes through step by step and teaches kids different challenges and lessons along the way. It's really no prep. It's made for people who actually aren't teachers. So it's very, very simple and I, I love it. I do at least one Google CS First Club, um, at least one a year, if not two. So their Unplug curriculum is pretty cool. It has like lots of hands-on activities and directions for you as a teacher of how you can lead the class with this. There are other things that the kids could do virtually. Um, so you could take a screenshot of it and then post it into Seesaw or Google Classroom. So you don't need an actual coding program, um, but you could lead those activities virtually as well. So those are definitely awesome to check out. The last one I'm going to be sharing with you this one's great for the like third grade through sixth grade because it is harder than you think even though it's minimal materials. It takes a lot of deep thinking. So it is some cup coating. All kids need are 10 plastic cups. Um, don't do glass, so hopefully you don't get their like fancy kitchen glasses because that would be bad. So they need um, 10 plastic cups. If they don't have plastic cups and you know you're going to do this activity remotely, um, you could maybe have a pickup day or drop these off at their house, have a little bag and say, wait until Thursday for special activities. So if you're thinking about kids who might need materials, um, I have these little cups at home. So they just need cups and then um, I would, you could put this in the bag if you're sending materials, but um, I, this isn't necessarily part of the activity, but I have them make a grid so they know how to count their code, and I'll show you what the code means with the cups, but I have them make a grid so they um, just draw lines and they number the spots and the lines. So they have number one, which is their start, number two is on the line, three is in the spot, four is on the line, because when they write the code, they need to know like the location of where the cups will go. So this grid is really helpful. I did this station without having a grid and the kids got really confused, but this was helpful with the visuals. So that's materials wise. So kids could definitely do this on the computer, like you could do this with me right now. Um, so what you would do is, again, you would go over the coding vocabulary, and this is all from um, the Hour of Code, and again, I will link everything for you. I'll show you at the end where to get that. Um, so you go over the coding vocabulary. Um, you could show this, of course, digitally. You don't have to print it, but um, you tell them, okay, up means you're going to pick up the cup. The down arrow means you're going to put it down um, forward and backward. So this is all the language. Now, when it's talking about picking the cup up. So you start with like a starter project. So this would be a good starter one. Okay, so your goal is to write the code for somebody to create this design. So the code is with the arrows and they have the cups to help them walk through those steps. So basically, um, you have to know, okay, I need to pick up my cup, I need to move it two spaces and then put it down. So they would write um, up, um, left, left, down, so then they know what to do. Um, if they have to start stacking the cups, that's when um, you have to explain to them, okay, so if I wanna stack a cup, the code is up one, up one, over, over, and down. So they have to know that up is like the length of a cup. So you, I'm telling you guys, it gets a little hard 
but it's so good for that computational thing. Not hard, not too hard. It's not too hard, it's a good hard, but um, it can really think about it. And they can check each other's codes. So maybe before revealing the answer, um, they could talk in breakout rooms and discuss what their code was. And there are multiple ways to get a solution. So some kids might have multiple ways that could be correct, and you can share back those answers. I could see this one actually taking a while. When you look at the lesson materials, there's lots of introduction videos. There's lots of ways to get deeper into this. So I just explained the shortened version of it, which you could definitely use as a station. But if you want something that will last a few days, check out all the lesson materials from Hour of Code. Um, I link those directly for you in my post. Um, but that way you can help break down that computational thinking. So just three awesome activities for to help with your coding experience, your unplugged coding, and hopefully maybe this will help you when you're going virtual. Um, I would love to answer any questions either in the comments below or definitely um, DM me on Instagram. It's at Naomi Meredith underscore. I love chatting with you guys and helping you out. Um, and also if you're like, wait, what are all those materials again? It is NaomiMeredith.com slash virtual hour of code. So these three activities are linked in there. It's also linked to the past part one if you need that information as well. But thank you so much again for watching another episode of the STEM Tech Co. Show. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon.